excited for you to meet Eric Wu. I've known him for a pretty long time in the SEO space, and he might be the reason for the Google Panda update. So I hope you like this interview. SEMrush is an online visibility, management, and content marketing SaaS platform. Today, it unites over 5 million marketers worldwide and assists them in their everyday with help of its key tools, competitive research, SEO, content marketing, social media, and advertising. SEMrush always aims to provide a product solution to all marketing experts to ease their workflow. Check out their newly launched tool, Content Marketplace. Now you can order and optimize blog posts in just a few clicks to fuel your content marketing efforts. Check them out at SEMrush.com and thank you for sponsoring SEMrush. This is a guy named Eric. That's about it. Hello. Now we're done. Yep, go. I'm good. All cool. Right. Bye. Great interview. I appreciate it. Awesome, man. I didn't man. really want the handshake, but since oh, you did it, oh, now, oh. That we have to, now we have to really Well, start. I gotta wash my hands because you're always sick. I am and... always sick, yeah. <laughs> All right, anyway, tell people who you are. Uh, I'm Eric Wu. I do SEO and product management for all kinds of different companies. Uh, primarily a company called Blue Nation right now. Right now. And no porn. And no porn, <laughs> but that's how I got started. You got started in porn? Of course. Everyone gets started in porn, <laughs> don't they? Well, Matt Cutts got started in porn. That's, I'm, I've been trying to follow Matt Cutts' um, you know, history yes. and career path. Yeah, he's been a pretty successful guy. So, In any event, um, you've been doing SEO since 2000, right? Yes. Which means you've been doing SEO longer than I've been writing about it. Really? Mm -hmm. I didn't realize that. Yeah, I started writing about it in 2003. Okay, so I, I got started doing SEO uh, for the city of San Diego. Like a lot of SEOs fell into it, quote unquote. Yeah. Um, basically, it all did start with porn because uh, <laughs> the San Diego Fire Department, SDFD, basically if someone was searching for the fire department, a porn site would rank number one. And uh -huh. we had this nice old lady who would call into the city council meetings that were broadcast and ask the mayor every single week, <laughs> why are you sending me a porn site? Why are you sending me a porn site? So I had to figure out, not knowing SEO, how to outrank a porn site Which for like, SDFD. Did you do it? Uh, we did, eventually. It's hard, it's outrank it porn It was sites. really hard. I remember like back when Ash Jeeves retired, the Ash Jeeves retirement website, when they let it expire, a porn site took it over. It was great because it had so many links to it. Yeah. And it was like, let's do whatever we want. I mean, want it's with appropriate. It. I mean, it's, it's yeah. Jeeves it really needed to, to take a new break. And also, besides for porn and trying to outrank porn, your also claim to fame is the call being the reason for Panda. Yes, uh, worked at Demand Media, eHow primarily, uh, also Livestrong.com, and you're welcome for Panda because Google created that for us. So you've been working. How long? How long are you working there for before Panda hit? So I was actually there right before the IPO, uh, which was probably about five months before Panda hit. And okay. so we went from a billion dollar IPO, which is basically the first company, first company I know of that basically IPO'd on SEO. Right. And we went from a billion dollar valuation to $700 million valuation in about two weeks. It's pretty good. And it's all because of you. Uh, pretty much. You five can blame months. me. You were probably the last SEO they hired. No, we hired many more, and okay. we, we actually got out of Panda Lots, but... You got out of Panda? Yeah. It wasn't so the same. The thing that most people don't know, one, about Demand Media is uh, the reason why you probably also don't have, uh, where, uh, what is it, query not provided is also probably because of demand, because we owned Enom, and we would do domain tasting to figure out what people were typing and getting those keywords to create the demand of what content we would write. Amazing, you guys are, you mean, this is all your idea obviously, so we'll f you'll find out how to follow him later and then send him all your complaints. In any event, um, let's talk about how you got developers to do what they need to do, because obviously the developers don't like to be told what to do, and especially developers don't like to be told what to do by SEOs. Right. Nobody likes to be told what to do by SEOs. Right. So what's the, what's the solution? So, Candies, I mean, porn? <laughs> Those things can work, honestly, from time to time. Um, but I would say, like, the things that SEOs don't do well is pretty much uh, making friends with your developers and actually being able to talk how they talk. So a lot of times when I'm hanging out with uh, a new developer, say it's a front-end engineer, I might just casually pull up, like, the Chrome Inspector tool, look at different aspects of performance, and they're super impressed because that's the tool that they constantly use. I'm not pulling up an SEO tool. I'm showing them that I know how to use their tools. Or if it's a backend developer, I'll pull up the command line. I'll do a simple curl or a wget from command line. It's not hard to learn. And all of a sudden, you've built like instant rapport with that developer because they're like, oh, you know how to use terminal? Yes, I know how to use terminal. And it's one of those things that you can social engineer your way in just a little bit. So you just basically talk their language. And you talk their language. And then, I mean, of course, you have to back it up at some point. But you also don't try to tell them what to do. 
you give them the business case, you tell them that, hey, this is where we wanna go. And then because you've now built rapport with them, they're gonna trust you when you give them additional resources. Like here's the Google doc where Google says, this is what we need to do. Right, so it's funny, cause I just met with somebody, actually the video is gonna be published day, well, well, next week, which means this video will probably be published like in three months from now. But the person was like, yeah, I'll just take the guy out for dinner, you know, butter them up and then get them to do what I need to do. That doesn't work, you think? I think that can work with some engineers, but for the most part, they know that's what you're doing, right? If you basically talk to them or talk to them the way that they wanna be talked to and show that you can understand their language, right. they're more willing to learn your language. Okay, And the other additional quote unquote social engineering thing is a lot of times with engineers, you, if you explain to them something like a really complicated system of, hey, we wanna do, canonicals but we want to do it on all our pages they start thinking about oh well i've got to change this template and this template and this template and it makes it really big and they're like oh no it's too complicated we can't do this right but if you just approach it with we just want to change this one page most of the time they're like okay well what do you want to do oh i want to change the canonical so what does that mean and they're willing to listen to it when it's a small problem and once they've agreed to it then you just tell them and for the next phase we're going to want to do this other small section and like well why don't we just do it at the same time and then you just kind of like slowly boil that frog. And then it becomes their idea to do it in Effectively. an automated way. Exactly. Got it. Uh-huh. Interesting. Who else do you use those tactics with? I basically use that with, I also use that with executives. A lot of times with engineers, it works one way. I was hoping you say like your wife or something. <laughs> <laughs> this is your idea. I actually get this new TV because of you. I basically learned that from her. Okay. That's what she go. does to me. All right. Awesome. <laughs> cool. All right. Is there such a thing as SEO beyond content and uh, links? You say no. Um, no. No, of course not. Like it's all about links and content. Just well, you don't even need links anymore. You're just like good, just write good content. Of course, for Bert, Bert of content. Course. Bert, I mean, Bert, optimize Bert optimized. for Bert. Yes. Uh, make sure your stop words are good. Yes. And you're you're perfect. All right, we're done again. No, yes. <laughs> um, honestly, <laughs> these days it's really interesting having seen Google Panda, which is a fir from my experience the first real machine learning system that they rolled out at scale. Okay to now looking at BERT and other things that they're doing for machine learning. All this idea of optimizing for user experience is now so much more prevalent than content and links. You still need the content, you still need the links, but if I learned anything at Demand Media, the fact of the matter is Google still doesn't understand facts. Because they don't understand facts, if you fit the machine model of what it expects the content to be, and if you fit the machine learning model of what it expects the links to behave and the users to behave, you basically can rank number one, even if you don't have that many links or you don't have the greatest content because you're creating that user behavior signal, that feedback loop that Google's expecting to see in their algorithm. And specifically when you say user behavior, that's more about how you structure your content on your website, navigation, the content structure. I know like Google doesn't use click-through rates or whatever they, they, they claim that I claim, I think behavior is looking at, Google looks at their own search stream as they do with, we do with our query stream. Meaning they look at how people are searching and if your site is a site that has a difference in search behavior where they arrive at your site and all of a sudden they don't do the subsequent three or four searches that most users do, I believe that Google is giving credit to that by inference that this particular site is solving those additional tasks. So you don't think that Google is necessarily using Chrome data or Google no. Analytics data? I feel like one, it's either too noisy and two, if like they're using Google Analytics data, they would get into a whole lot of like yeah. governmental problems. And pogo sticking you don't believe in all that stuff? Like pogo sticking is like a behavior that is a result of uh, the end user's behavior of like finding their tasks, right? So is it something that you potentially could measure or they could measure? Possibly, but I don't think it's a clean signal. So you think they're actually measuring, so for example, if they went to my site by typing in Google BERT and they found my article about Google BERT, which right. they probably won't because right. they don't rank me number one for right. Google BERT. <laughs> um, but if they did, and then after that, you're saying they go back to Google a minute later and then search for something more specific about BERT? Right, but if, if they don't if do you, that? If there's a website that where they arrived and they didn't do that, and there's enough people who do that, then they can infer that that other resource that they arrive at has more information or leads that person to more information. I mean, you see this all the time. I, I haven't heard that theory often. I'm not sure if they do that. Here, here's a perfect example. Yeah. So if anybody's ever had automotive problems where 
you see this light on your dashboard and you're like, what is this light? Right. And you'll find that Google ranks some kind of message board and that first ranking thing is probably five or six years old. Right. And probably not completely relevant. But if you go through those threads, you'll eventually get to someone's like, oh, the answer's over here. Yeah. And you'll find that, that wherever that's linking is basically on the third page, like the third ranking down or something like that. Okay. But from Google's perspective, the users who go to that first link, that old thing, even though it's not the primary resource that gives you the direct answer, right. that is the thing that gives the most signal to them that that's where the users start their journey to find the right answer, right? And there's no other reason for Google to really rank something that that's super old and also doesn't have the keyword research, the keyword topics and all that stuff of a, say like you're right, driving a 2019 right. Tesla, right? And why are they ranking the 2016 one? Right. No, it's interesting. Something to ask John Mueller about. Has he ever commented on something like that? Honestly, I, it's a, my own personal theory. I've never asked a Googler about that. So um, I'm ask. But I'm not going to say anyway. But even if I'm wrong, which I'm, I'm possibly wrong, right? No, you can't be wrong. I, <laughs> but I think uh, the approach, if you have that mental approach of solving those user yeah. intent that way, you basically build the content, the links, and everything else that you need right. to, to generate that behavior. Which is why all these theories around user experience, click data, bounce rates, pogo sticking, it doesn't really matter. Right. Because ultimately, you know. I spent time just optimizing our checkout flow, which is not crawlable by Google. Right. I increased our conversion rate, and our Google rankings went up over time by there not really go. doing anything Conspiracy else. Conspiracy theories. Yeah. yeah. So. <laughs> Awesome. I appreciate you taking the time to yeah. do this. Um, where can people follow you and learn more about you? Uh, you can follow me on Twitter uh, at eywoo.com. And then also uh, you can follow me and my uh, business partner, Wassam Dandan, at uh, Growth Cage. And, uh, can I flip the camera around? There he is. He doesn't like to be on camera. So we'll flip it back. We have to say goodbye. Bye.